What's going on, everybody? Happy Sunday. So I wanted to do the wanted to do this video, I should say, yesterday, but I was beat. I'm not gonna lie. From staying in the deck on Friday, loading my car up for the show, doing the show on Saturday, coming home unloading, and then starting to do about oh, I want to say about six hours of looking cards over for a, a PSA review. And then today was uh, getting a lot of stuff shipped, you know, boxed up and ready to be shipped out for uh, the post office on uh, Monday. So, uh, as you can see from the video, it was a pretty busy show. I would probably say 60% dealer capacity because I did see a few dealers didn't show up. I mean, we still got COVID going on, monkeypox, and who knows what else is out there anymore. The overall show was really good. I kept busy the whole time frame. For once, I did not buy one card there. Uh, no one came to me this time selling cards. This was probably the first time in, oh, probably three or four months setting up at any show as a dealer, which was different. But I'm a, the difference that I saw in trends in this show my 50 cent and dollar box pretty much made as much as I did as selling things out of my showcase. People were just going through the 50 cent dollar boxes, grabbing, you know, 30, 20 dollar, even 50 dollar stacks out. So I started replenishing those today. Um, really a lot different. What I did hear from uh, people coming around the show was there's a lot of people. Overpriced An example would have been a this year mosaic Luca Auto Gold out of ten. It was a PSA ten. Yes, a PSA ten pop one, but the guy even was aware of this. There was a PSA ten with a ten auto that also graded, which was not in the pop count because you have to go into the part where uh, it's a ten ten auto. Crazy stuff when you start looking at pop reports. If a car doesn't auto, I always check to see if there's a 1010 out there too because it's under different pop report. I always forget to say that in my videos, but um, I didn't know how many people knew that offhand. But the guy wanted 2500 for a PSA 1010 that sold for 2300 And it, it was just really um, overpriced a lot of stuff out there. I heard a lot of people were not budging on prices. There was a guy with vintage, which I can understand because he had some stuff you didn't see anywhere else. I probably wouldn't have budged either if I was right around comps on his stuff. I'm trying to think. There was a mini, uh, like to my left, all the tables were blank. I want to say there was probably about like seven, eight tables. Some people took over for like their mini little trade area slash deals over there but from what I did walk around at there was nothing that like really got my attention except for uh, one guy in hockey I meant to go back and pick up the Malkin auto and I totally forgot onto it just because it was already two o'clock I don't know how time just flew yesterday but uh, some of the stuff that sold quarterbacks Basketball on card autos. I'm trying to think here. Really, a lot of people are looking for on card autos. There was a Joe Burrow Panini 101 grade of PSA 9 somebody sold for 1200 I mean, I, I, I didn't realize Burrow's stuff was down so well. I call it low because I would expect that PSA 9 to be a lot more, even though it's Panini 1 because of what boxes cost. Maybe I'm just off. But, yeah, uh, from what I heard, a lot of people wouldn't budge on prices. And it was basically about five dealers total because a couple people told me who they were. And I just never really looked at their stuff. But a lot of cool stuff. Uh, the video with all the cards in the beginning was all one guy's table. It's usually who I go and buy from. He's usually about 10 to 15% under the last sale, which uh, normally... You know, with the stuff he had, I usually have no problem. And sometimes, you know, they give you a little more of a deal because you're a repeat customer, stuff like that. But overall, it was not a bad show. Uh, like I said, a lot of traffic came through. It was really busy till about noon. You could tell we're in football season, though. 
any show during football season in Kentucky, and then we had basketball with college basketball. But those games that start at noon, the shows are dried up by like 12.30. A lot of people are packing up, and everybody's in there from like about 12.32. We're looking for deals. The one thing I will say is people were wanting to get dealers to drop, like if the card's $100, get it for $80. That makes no sense to me, you know, from an aspect of being a dealer, because if you had an old eBay account, you're under the 11.9% uh, if you took the, uh, I don't know what stage everybody took, but I think I was the first wave of that new payment processing. So why would I drop from $88 to $80 knowing that I have a license still to pay sales tax on the order? It, it made no sense with what people were offering. And there were a few people came by doing stuff like that that I've never seen before, or I know they are known for doing. And I just told them I wouldn't budge my prices, and they just walk away, which I'm fine with. Because there's plenty of other people come around that are either repeat customers. They've got a good um, personality, I guess you could say, to them, to where they're cordial and stuff like that there, to where, you know, you'll give people deals and stuff like that, or, st or like stacks. I could see, like, if you were buying, you know, 10, 15 cards around 1,000 to 15, and somebody gave you 20% off, but a $100 card for 80, it was just weird. Some of the stuff I've seen and heard people trying to do yesterday, and a lot of uh, people are just wise, you know, getting more wise, I guess you say some more stingy about that stuff, and it's just the way I've always been, I, I can't do 20% off on lots, I mean, unless you've been a big repeat customer, just for the fact I still got to pay 6% sales tax because I'm legally bound to it by my licensing. And I don't know how many other dealers are, you know, licensed and stuff like that. How many people actually report their cash sales it goes down to? Um, I take pictures of the cards I sell and I'm writing down in my little notebook how much and stuff. Maybe I don't know, maybe just because I'm doing things the legal way too. But yeah, I figured I'd share this with you. Sorry to pick anything up, but everybody, um, just was nothing there. It really just caught my attention that I was like, oh, I must have, I want to grade this, or, you know, I need this for my PC of, like, Nolan Ryan, maybe Jordan, Crosby, stuff like that. Plus, I know Fine City Crosby stuff's kind of hard, too, uh, especially just in a big hockey area. But wanted to share some of the insights onto it uh, from the show for uh, just new trends and some old trends that are resetting back in just for general knowledge out there all right guys i'm going to take out of here you guys have a good one i got some uh different videos coming out this week uh be sure to look for the one labeled discord trade night all right everybody take care of a good one see you next video